Hello and good morning. Thank you for joining us today for the Johns Hopkins School of Education Master of Science and Counseling Program Virtual Open House Webinar. My name is Kiana Napper and I'm the Senior Academic Program Coordinator for the Master's in Counseling Program at the School of Education. Also presenting today, we have faculty members Dr. Vivian Lee, Dr. Aparna Ramaswamy, and Dr. Ileana Gonzalez. Before we get started, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. First, today's webinar is being recorded. We will share a link with you after the event is complete. Also, please take a second to see if your mic is on mute. Please have your mic on mute and your video off at all times during the presentation. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Please type your questions in the chat box and the faculty and I will read and answer your questions. Next, I would like to share the agenda for today's virtual webinar. We will kick off the presentation sharing an overview of the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Then the faculty will introduce themselves and discuss an overview and details of the counseling program. Lastly, I'll wrap up with admissions requirements and leave the floor open for questions at the end. We are one of nine schools at Johns Hopkins University. We began offering college courses for teachers in 1909 and then became our own school in 2007. Johns Hopkins School of Education is consistently ranked one of the top graduate schools in education by the US News and World Report. For school enrollment, we have approximately 2,465 students. We offer more than 30 graduate programs, which includes doctoral, master's, and graduate certificate programs. We have approximately 121 full-time faculty members and a strong network of 23,000 active SOE alums. At this time, our faculty presenters will introduce themselves. First up, we have Dr. Vivian Lee. Thank you, Kiana, so much. Welcome, everybody, and good morning. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be with us this morning. We look forward to sharing information with you about our program and answering your questions. My name is Dr. Vivian Lee, and I have been at the university. This is going on my fifth year. I work across both programs in clinical mental health and in school counseling, and I teach courses in counseling techniques, diversity and social justice. And for field experience, I work in the area of school counseling in practicum and in internship. My areas of research focus mostly internationally on advocacy issues related to school-based counseling globally as well as then nationally looking at now the current role of more clinical mental health counselors coming into the schools and what that means about how we provide the best service for students. I'm also current chair of the International Society for Policy Research and Evaluation in School-Based Counseling. I look forward to talking with you more this morning. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Dr. Aparna Ramaswamy. I've been at Hopkins first as a student uh, over 20 years ago almost, I'm dating myself here, and then later as a faculty. I teach several core courses, more recently uh, diagnosis, appraisal, ethics, and counseling. I also teach the other end of electives, which is meditation, mindfulness, expressive arts, a little bit of yoga. So my background is as a mental health provider and I teach as a clinical mental health faculty at the Hopkins program. And I really look forward to getting to know you at this open house and potentially meeting you as you apply and as you go in through the orientations. The program is very strong in terms of its focus, like Dr. Lee said, on social justice and multiculturalism. And again, we are focused on training you not just as research scholars and as expert in the field of counseling, but as very competent and compassionate counselors. Welcome. 
Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Ileana Gonzalez. It is my 10th year um, with our wonderful faculty and students at Johns Hopkins University. I wanna wish you all good morning here on the East Coast or wherever it is that you are Zooming in from. Um, I uh, teach across both disciplines as well. My specialization is in school counseling, though my favorite course to teach is diversity and social justice, which as you will learn today, is the fulcrum, it's the, it's the top of our program in terms of everything that we do as counselors is related to multicultural, uh, multiculturalism and social justice. I'm so glad to be with you here um, this morning, even though we're doing this online, but we're gonna make it work. And to feel free to ask all the questions that you have about the program. We are here to um, answer all those questions for you. And if we don't have the answer, we can certainly point you um, in the right direction. Um, I'm very interested in urban schools and have been since I was an urban school counselor in South Florida, where I am from. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting to know all of you this morning. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ramaswamy and Dr. Gonzalez. So let's begin our discussion and presentation this morning about our counseling program. As we have already mentioned, diversity and social justice is the focus of our program. It is critically important to us and we weave that focus throughout all of our courses. I really enjoy being the course lead for diversity and social justice and Dr. Gonzalez and I work very closely together on that along with the other faculty who teach. On the screen, you will see a building that we call the education building. It is at Homewood at the Homewood campus in Baltimore. The counseling program is one program. Our first and foremost focus is training you as a counselor. And then we have two specialties, which are school counseling and clinical mental health counseling. Okay, Kiana, can you turn? You will see on the screen a list of our counseling faculty and staff and a picture of our program lead, Dr. Young. Unfortunately, she was not able to be with us um, today. She is wonderful. Um, and there is a list of all of our faculty, our dean, Dean Morphew, our department chair, Dr. Rice. Dr. Young is our faculty lead and all of our um, faculty along with Dr. Lauka, who is our clinical director, Ms. Connolly, who is our field experience coordinator, and Ms. Knapper, who's our academic program coordinator. Every one of our faculty brings specialties and a wealth of knowledge from their past experiences and their ongoing work that they do. And they are very, very involved with students and if you are, if you apply and are accepted and come to us, you will be assigned one of the faculty members as an advisor. We really encourage you to become very, very acquainted with your advisor, to work with your advisor, and they will help you as you go through the program with anything that you would need. Okay, next slide. <coughs> Excuse me. On the screen is our mission statement. We took a lot of time in revising this and we have just recently revised it to reflect what we believe in as a faculty and what we think is critically important in training counselors to serve not only now but in the future as well within a global society. So it looks at what we are doing very carefully is to prepare graduate students to serve as socially just school counselors and clinical mental health counselors who implement theoretical, empirical, practical frameworks that facilitate client growth and development, introspective awareness, and well-being in a global society. And we're very conscious of the fact that as we train, we have many international students and students who come to us from all over the world. So we really put a focus on understanding that we are in a global society. Next slide, please. <coughs> 
So we have, as our degree, I think what's really important to be able to look at here is there's sometimes a confusion I, I hear, not just here sometimes, but across the nation on what is, what is the degree you are actually getting. So here at Johns Hopkins, you would be working on a Master of Science in Counseling. So everybody receives that same degree. The differentiation is you may have a specialty area in school counseling or a specialty area in clinical mental health counseling. But the degree that you receive is a Master of Science in Counseling. Okay, next slide. Okay, so on the screen, you see the full-time course sequence for our program. And as you can see, it is laid out by year and by semester for clinical mental health and for school counseling. This is the sequence in which students are to take classes. There are prerequisites to all of our classes. So students will have to follow um, the sequence as they begin if they're a full-time student. So let's go through it and see what we have. If you look at fall semester across the screen, you will see that both clinical mental health and school counseling students are in the same classes except clinical mental health students in fall semester do an introduction to clinical mental health and school counseling students do the foundations of school counseling for semester one. In the spring semester, again, the courses are the same for diversity and social justice, diagnosis, and career. The change happens where clinical mental health students have psychopathology and counsel and school counseling students have counseling adolescence. So as you can see thus far, the training except for two courses is basically the same. Year two fall semester, <coughs> excuse me, you will see there that the training is exactly the same, group counseling, group experience, cognitive behavioral therapy, ethics class, and couple and family. Now differences occur in year two for spring semester. However, which we will talk about more later, both clinical mental health and practicum students in school counseling and students in school counseling engage in practicum. We'll talk about that more in depth later. While clinical mental health students have an elective, school counseling students do counseling leadership and consultation. Both do addiction and both do appraisal. Year three fall semester, both are in internship and both are in research. And year three internship for both elective for both unless a school counseling student has not had a course in special education, which the Maryland State Department of Education requires for you to be certified. Now, if you look at the bottom, you will see the elective. These are currently our electives. Some of our electives are, are online. All of the courses within the box that I've just talked to you about are all face-to-face -face classes. They're all 16, 16 weeks. First 15 weeks are instruction, and then we have one week for exams. Starting this fall, all of our courses start in the fall, and for new incoming students will be at the Homewood campus. Okay, next slide, please. We also do understand that there are some potential students that full-time attendance is not part of their life circumstance of what they can manage at this point in time. And so we also do have a part-time option for both clinical mental health and school counseling. While the university indicates that it, you have up to five years to complete your program, if you saw in the 
full-time that is completed in three years and the part-time is completed in four years. Again, let's look at the courses. Year one, fall semester. If you go through and you look at it, and I'm not gonna read them all off again to you, but you can see again how many follow along the same path with the exact same differences that there were in the full-time. Part-time students get the same program that full-time students do. It just takes a little longer as some folks need to attend on a part-time basis. But the instructors are the same and the quality of what you get, the courses are all exactly the same, okay? Next slide, please. So I wanna talk a little bit about clinical experience. Both school and clinical mental health counselors engage in a clinical experience beginning with practicum. Now there's a lot to know about field experience which encompasses practicum and internship. And I'm gonna go through these kind of slowly, <coughs> excuse me, so that you have a chance to process this and think about any questions that you might have or want to be able to ask later on, okay? So beginning in fall 2020, all students, all clinical mental health, all school counseling will all be 60 credit, okay? Everybody is 60 credit. We currently do have 48, but that option will not be available to students at, at past the end of this semester. We have made a lot of changes um, in, in our program, and one of them is both school and clinical mental health will be 60 credits as outlined. So let's talk about practicum. Practicum begins your field experiences, okay? It's a three credit class in which you accrue 100 hours in a field experience setting, which is either school or a clinical mental health agency. Now, what is different here for school and mental health agencies is that those who are in the school program, they do not have the choice of which school they would attend. They apply with Ms. Connolly and indicate which districts they might like to go to. Our clinical mental health, our CMHC students apply directly to the agencies or other settings to secure their practicum site. Now, I told you about, you have already met Ms. Knapper and Ms. Connolly. They are two extremely important people in our program. And when they send you any kind of email, if you come to us, it's absolutely important that you read it. Ms. Connolly sends you all the information you need to know about what sites are available, how to apply, and when the deadlines are. I will tell you, we are really big on deadlines here in our program. They're really important to us and we make sure that students have their materials in on time. So we're a very large program, so it's important that we keep our deadlines. Now, for that experience, as you can see, Practicum has 40 direct hours of individual or group counseling and 60 direct hours on site um, for students. So that has to be completed a minimum of 40 direct, 60 indirect for a minimum of 100 hours. You attend your practicum site and you also have class at the university one day a week. In practicum, we focus on the integration of theory and practice, on how to develop and present case conceptualizations, how to engage treatment planning for the context and population you are working with, and the appropriate delivery of services for those populations. Supervision is provided by both faculty 
and on-site supervisors. It is essential to know that students must successfully complete all requirements of practicum before they can go to internship. Sometimes students ask if they can enroll concurrently. No, under our, our, our standards, that's not possible for students to do. So once practicum is done, then you're allowed to go forward. Next slide, please. <coughs> for internship, this clinical experience for interns in school counseling, as well as CMHC, both have 600 total hours for six credits. For school counseling, you are practicing the role of a school counselor in a K-12 public school setting. What is important for all internship students to think about, and some for practicum as well, is this actually becomes your job. And in public schools, districts have been very clear with us that if you work in a district or currently working in a district, they do not allow you to do your um, internship in that district nor do those who are working in a school, you cannot do it within your school as well. So you must plan with HR, your, your human resources uh, folks, so that you know what is required for you to be able to take a leave of absence from your job if that's what you choose to do, if you are working. Internship is completed over two semesters, 300 hours, three credits each semester. You may have noted and seen on our website for those who are currently involved in school counseling, a one semester 600 hour internship that is no longer offered. All new incoming students, our internship for school counseling is 300 hours semester one, 300 hours semester two. Okay, next slide please. The internship in clinical mental health, as I indicated, is also 600 hours. It is six credits of clinical practice in a clinical mental health setting. It's completed across two academic semesters in a fall to spring sequence at an approved mental health agency. It's very important to note that it is an approved mental health agency. It is not just anyone. The sites that we have have gone through a process that says that the standards that we expect here at Hopkins, that those are similarly aligned with those mental health agencies. I would also note that there are some settings which do have clinical mental health students within the school setting. Okay, next slide, please. Before I go on to certification and licensure, I wanna talk about um, school counseling for just a moment. For those who would be interested in school counseling, and because it has to do with um, licensure and certification, when you finish the degree at Hopkins, you have all the academic um, requirements necessary to apply for certification with the Maryland State Department of Education to be a school counselor in the state of Maryland. Some states differ in their requirements and require other things. For example, um, in Pennsylvania, they also require a praxis exam. So if you are coming from another state and you want to return to that state to practice, or if you are a clinical mental health student and are coming, plan, want to come to Hopkins and then return to your home state, it's absolutely essential from the time that you begin your program that you familiarize yourself with the state requirements for licensure, okay? Now, let's talk about clinical mental health licensure and then there's, can I go back for just a second? 
um, students are eligible to take the National Counselor Examination to obtain their NCC credential, and they can do that before they graduate. There are other specialty certifications are available after obtaining the NCC School Counselor NCSC and the CCMHC. For clinical mental health students, there are some states that require the CCMHC instead of the NCC, which again is why I'm really encouraging you that if you plan to attend graduate school in a state different than what you live in and where you want to practice, it is essential that you know what their um, requirements are. There are some that require CCMHC. And for example, in the state of Maryland, we also require a law degree, okay? And not a law degree, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a law exam. Oh goodness, you probably all just had a heart attack as I said that. Um, so that, that's very important that we look at that. Okay, can we go to the next one? We also have a certificate of advanced studies, which is called a CAGS, which is 30 credits for candidates that need more than 15 credits to gain licensure. Requires internship also for those who work in different disciplines. Okay. We have a post master certificate, works with advisors to select classes, um, can have an internship with it, or it may not. But for both clinical mental health and school counseling students, because you both are involved in 60 credit programs, you will have the academic requirements necessary to begin the process of LGPC, the beginning step in licensure in the state of Maryland, okay? School counseling students also have what is required for MSDE certification as a school counselor. Clinical mental health students, even if they did internship in a school setting, are not qualified to become certified by Maryland State Department of Education as a school counselor. Sometimes students ask the question, does this mean it's a dual degree? No, there's no such thing as a dual degree. All it means is 60 credits gives school counseling students academic courses necessary for certification for MSDE school counselor certification. They also have the academic requirements, academic requirements only, if they choose to pursue counselor licensure with the Maryland State Counselor Licensing Board. Clinical mental health students graduate with the academic courses necessary to begin the process of licensure with clinical mental with the clinical state clinical licensing board. Okay. So there are some differences in those two things. So it's really important that we're very, very clear about what those mean. Next slide, please. So where are graduates employed? Our graduates are employed in many, many places, not just schools and agencies. As you can see on the screen, there is a wide variety of places where a master's in counseling with either specialty from Johns Hopkins University can take you. So it is not a singular focus. There's a wide variety of opportunities out there for you. Okay, next slide, please. Student research and doctoral study programs. 
Some of us are involved in research studies where students are involved. Currently, I'm involved in a research study where students are involved. Some of the other faculty are as well. There are also research opportunities in other areas within Johns Hopkins. Some of our students have found research opportunities in the School of Medicine, in the School of Public Health, and in other laboratories where they are doing work. So those opportunities do come out on announcements. We also do have students who go directly from our program into doctoral study. There are a number of programs where students go. Our students most often go directly into counselor education and supervision, which is the natural progression from a counselor education master's degree. We do have some that do go to other things. We've had some that go to counseling psych. Very, very few go on to um, clean psych. Um, those are two different professions. So when you, if you have an interest in doctoral studies and you know, if that is your, your goal, we are more than glad to talk to you as, your, as advisors. We are also share among each other if we know different schools that are available, um, places we know or have had contact with that we can give you in-depth information about doctoral study to help you with your career life planning because we know that your master's degree is one step along the way of your overall career life plan. Okay, um, at this point, next, next slide, please. So we also have our student organization, which is Chi Sigma Iota. This is the International Counseling Honor Society. And Students who have earned a 3.5 GPA and meet other criteria are invited to participate in this organization. Dr. Zhang heads up this organization and it's a really fun, active organization. And it is an international organization and a lot goes on nationally. So we would advise you if you um, are invited into the organization to become active members and really gain everything possible that you can um, from our program. So at this point, I can see that the group chat is just going. So let's open this up to some, well, before I do that, Ms. Snapper is going to give us some other information about admissions and then we'll be able to have open question and answer. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, I just want to do, uh, go over the admissions deadlines and requirements. Um, both our school counseling and our mental health counseling programs offer fall term admission only. Uh, you can visit our admissions website for more details. At a minimum, all applicants will be required to meet the following requirements and submit the following documents for consideration. You must have a 3.0 or better cumulative undergraduate grade point average. Uh, you need to complete the online application form and submit the payment of $80 for the application fee. You need transcripts from all post-secondary institutions attended. This will include those schools that you may have only taken one class or did not complete a degree from. You will need to submit an essay and personal statement, your resume or CV, two letters of recommendation. The GRE is not required for this program. Once your application has been submitted and reviewed, if selected, you will be invited to participate in an in-person or a virtual interview or um, a scheduled date. After that interview is completed, you will receive your admissions decision directly from the admissions office um, within a week. Um, for international applicants, there are a couple of additional um, things required. You must submit a passing IELTS or TOEFL score or submit a TOEFL waiver request form. Uh, 
for your international transcripts, you must submit a course by course evaluation of your academic credentials in lieu of transcripts if your degree was earned outside the US. You can see a list of approved credential evaluation agencies on the admissions website. If you have uh, if you need any additional information on international student admission requirements, please visit the website there. For our tuition and fees for the upcoming academic year, the base cost per credit for face-to-face -face classes is $833 per credit, making each course $2,499. If you have many online courses, the rate is $882 plus a $15 per credit technology fee, bringing the total for the course to $2,691. There is a registration and enrollment fee each semester that you register of $175. There's also a graduation fee of $175. In addition, we do have some courses like our lab courses um, that carry an additional fee of $70 and a materials fee of $70. When you get to your field experience courses, it carries um, an extra fee as well of $200 for three credit sections. Financial aid and scholarships. Um, this is just some information about financial aid that is available. For the best information, I encourage everyone to visit the website education.jhu.edu and navigate to the financial aid webpage. Okay, at this time, we will open up the floor to your questions. Please type them into the chat box. Um, our first question. I'm wondering when classes are held both on a part-time and full-time schedule. Okay, do you want, I'll answer that, Shanna. So okay. our classes, we have some daytime classes that start around 10 o'clock in the morning and they go through the afternoon and then we have classes, to, they go till around 3 or 3.30, then we have classes that start at 4.15 and go to 6.45, then we have classes from 7 to 9.30. Classes are one day a week and the schedule is laid out that, let's say you're a full-time student and you have four classes, you can take all four classes without any conflict among your classes and you have each one of them once a week. So there are some daytime and classes are also Monday through Thursday. Okay. Does that answer the questions? Is that the information needed? Yes. Okay. And we have a question about university transcripts sent to WES for evaluation. Um, but of course, due to the coronavirus pandemic, there will be some delays. Will this affect my application process if they are not received by April 1st? Um, I'll answer that question. Um, no, it will not. We would just need, uh, I would encourage you to communicate with the admissions office so that they are aware um, that you have already sent your transcripts for evaluation. We will make, of course, um, concessions as far as the time goes because of the current pandemic. Are there any other questions? Okay, here we go. Is it feasible to work full-time Monday through Friday, nine to five and be enrolled full-time? Okay, I'll respond to that. Not easily, no. It's it, to do four classes full-time. I've seen some students try to attempt it, but it is extraordinarily difficult. If you are working nine to, nine to five, five days a week, you really need to look at being part-time. Okay. What is a typical class size? So class sizes for didactic classes, will range anywhere from 10, 12, maybe up to 18. We try not to go anything past 20. For lab classes like techniques, diversity, group, 
Right now, my diversity class is only 14, and my techniques class was only 16. Um, our field experience classes are not more than 10, and right now I have a class of six and a class of three. So they are, they are much, much smaller, and that is done to meet our KCREP standards. Is the clinical mental health program mostly practice-based versus research-focused? Dr. Ramaswamy, do you want to speak to that? Certainly. I think the program specifically prepares you to be a counselor uh, in whichever state you are trying to do, and we target the state of Maryland, of course. But in addition to that, much of the content that is covered is from evidence-based practices. But if you are asking the question, do students engage in research as a part of coursework, we do have a course on research and evaluation, but that's not the main thrust of our program. And if other faculty want to jump in on that, please do feel free. Dr. Gonzalez. I'm sorry, the question, can you repeat the question? It was cutting in and out. Is the program research focused, uh, clinical mental health research focused or um, practice? Well, I can speak to the school side, yes, absolutely. Sorry, Dr. Lee, I, was, um, I, I wasn't aware of what you were trying to get at. Yes, no so I, I would echo what uh, Dr. Ramaswamy said. We are a clinical based program, but of course, you know, according to KCREP standards, we are based in evidence-based um, evidence work. So um, there is a research course that is a part of um, the curriculum uh, where you will learn research methods and of course, you know, theories, techniques, diversity, um, appraisal, any of the courses that we do are, and the teaching that we do is obviously based in uh, evidence-based practice. Same goes for um, our school counseling foundational courses. Are there any paid internships? At this time, no. Unfortunately, there aren't. Um, it is a training experience, and given the fact that it is a training experience, they are not paid for either practicum or internship. I'm currently in my junior year in undergrad. I understand that the fellows program was discontinued. However, would this be revisited in the future? Dr. Gonzalez, could yes, you thank you for that question. So the fellows program right now is in a rebuilding process. Um, the future, um, we are attempting to relaunch it in the future. Um, but for now, our school counseling program um, is, you can do it on a full-time basis. And of course, if, because the, fellows program was based in urban school counseling. We still have those relationships with school systems um, that are uh, ur in urban areas like Baltimore City Schools. So um, if students are still interested in that aspect of work in terms of school counseling, we can make sure um, that they have those opportunities. And of course, regardless of whether it's fellows program um, or a regular school counseling program, all of our courses are based in uh, multiculturalism and social justice. So um, our students will still be um, getting that type of instruction and that type of belief system. Can you do your internship or practicum over the summer? No, we will not be having um, summer-based practicums or internship. Our academic year will run the fall semester and the spring semester beginning fall 2020. Are the research opportunities you mentioned paid or unpaid? You know, that's a really good question. There are some that are and some that aren't. For example, the two students that are working with myself and Dr. Travis, it is on a grant and they will be paid. I do know in some of the other labs at other areas in the university, there are some students that it's actually their job, like a part-time job. So, and then there are other opportunities that aren't. So you have to kind of search those out. Do students need to travel between the two campuses for classes? Beginning fall 2020, our courses will be offered at the Homewood campus. 
Does the clinical mental health program emphasize any one theoretical orientation throughout? Dr. Ramaswamy, could you address that? I'm sorry, I was responding to another question on chat. Could you repeat that, Kiana? Yes, does the clinical mental health program emphasize any one theoretical orientation throughout? Uh, not necessarily. We have different faculty teaching it and the faculty themselves may have a preference for one or the other, but the content is targeted towards teaching our students complete competence across the board to all of our uh, theoretical orientations. When you go into field experience, the supervisor may therefore also have a preference, but our focus in our program is inclusive. And the question is, what sort of federal aid is available, grants, loans, or both? And I'll answer this question. Uh, the School of Education offers a, a limited number of partial need-based institutional scholarships each year. Through the generosity of donors, our, our endowed scholarship awards on average a range between $500 and $1,500 per semester, and it's applied to tuition expenses beginning in the fall semester. The faculty committees select the award recipient based on criteria established by the donor. International students, however, are not um, eligible for the endowed scholarship. For more information on financial aid, I encourage you to please visit the financial aid website and contact that office. Uh, the next question is, how long are classes and how many times a week do they meet? Classes are two and a half hours and they meet once a week. Okay. Um, there's a question about the total cost of attendance per year. Um, in a previous slide, I did show you the um, current tuition rates for the fall 21 through, um, excuse me, 20 through 21 academic year. You can also find that information on our website, education.jhu.edu and click on tuition. For flex, does each class meet once a week or do you simply meet one time a week? Could you repeat that please, Ms. Napper? I believe they're asking for the school counseling flex program, does each class meet once a week or do you just simply meet once a week um, in total? No, every class for the entire semester, whether it's clinical mental health or school, meets once a week for two and a half hours for 15 weeks of class. And then the 16th week is exam week. But each week you come to class for all classes that you take and each one is two and a half hours. So if you are taking two classes on one day, maybe you have one at 4.15 and then you have one at seven o'clock, you would spend two and a half hours in the first class, then you have a break, then you'd spend two and a half hours in the next class, and the next week on that same day, you would do the same thing. How significant is a lack of cake rep accreditation um, when it comes to job? Right now, at this point, um, jobs are not mandating KCREP. However, in the future, that can be more significant. There are some jobs that would like, um, in, in the clinical mental health area, for students to have that. However, we are working diligently in the process um, of completing everything that we need to do. We expect a site visit in the fall. After a site visit, a recommendation is made to the board. The board meets twice a year, once in January and once in July, which is when we will receive that word back. We are working to make sure that we have every single thing done that we need to do. For us, it's not an if, it's a when. We are so determined that that will be, that we will gain that back. And under KCREP regulations, for those graduating, when that is granted, there is an 18-month retro period for those who have graduated to have done so from a KCREP accredited program. 
Hey, and then last question. Um, just to double check, are there any undergrad prereqs for the clinical mental health counseling program? No. Students come to us from a variety of backgrounds in both clinical mental health and in school. That's a great question. Thanks. Um, actually, the final question, and I'll answer this, is over how many days are the classes spread during the first two years? Typically, we try to offer classes back to back. So if you're taking four classes, for instance, you may have two classes on a Monday and two classes on a Wednesday um, so that you can get all four classes in in that time frame. Okay. Um, how well does the program prepare students with the LCPC? Is it curriculum sufficient? Is the program curriculum sufficient? Dr. Ramaswamy, would you like to answer that? Yes. Uh, yes, the Maryland Board uh, requires certain courses in order to become a licensed counselor. And the academic preparation for that, our program satisfies. In addition to the academic program, you would need experience, field experience that's supervised, that you will have to do it outside post-graduation. But our program satisfies the educational component that you would need for this. Okay, it looks like the question uh, was cut off about the um, how many days the classes are spread. Um, we try to put our classes back to back so that students have a minimal number of days they need to come to the school. So for instance, if you're full time, you have four courses that are required in your first semester. So you would have probably two classes per day unless you want it. We do offer the classes staggered um, by time. So if you, uh, if it's that the classes are offered during the day and the evening, um, you may be able to, to take all four classes on one day. It just depends on the schedule. Okay, so at this time, we are going to close out uh, further questions. If you have any further questions, I you can contact myself and just if you have any questions, you can contact uh, Tyrene Maddox, who is our admissions coordinator for the program, or you can contact me, um, the academic program coordinator, and you can see my email address listed there if you have any additional questions. Thank you all for joining us. And as I stated, the admissions team, this presentation was recorded and the admissions team will send out um, the recording for everyone if you missed anything. Thank you and have a great day.